Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Michael O'Reilly, the chairman of the Town of Monroe Planning and Zoning Commission. It is September the 2nd, 2021. It is 7.02 p.m. and this is the regular meeting. Please join me to the, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have an announcement to make. Item number 12 was incorrectly posted. It should have read 24 referral for Housatonic Valley Rail Trail. Section 2 and 3. This 824 referral will be corrected by motion of the commission and taken up later tonight on the agenda. This is the information regarding this hybrid electronic public meeting on March 14, 2020 in response to COVID-19 pandemic and an effort to reduce the risk of transmission of the virtue of attendance at public meetings. Governor Lamont suspended in-person open meeting requirements and permits conducting public meetings remotely by conference call, video call, or other technology. A copy of the full text, order number 7B1 is available. Accordingly, the Town of Monroe is selected to go to meeting as its preferred technology to conduct this remote public meeting. Compliance with executive order 7B1 is now to permit 250 members of the public to participate in real time by a computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, by the access information set forth on the meeting's agenda. It's highly important any interested participants in the and utilize GoToMeeting software applications which are available in the meeting below prior to the of the meeting. Each meeting may have a unique application information, including access code, phone number, and live link. Any members of the public who desire to submit written information relative to the business set forth on the agenda may be so by 4 p.m. I'd like to call the roll, starting on my right. Dominic Smergolino, alternate. Dominic Benici, alternate. Ryan Condon, commissioner. Leanne Ambrosi, commissioner. Michael O'Reilly, chairman. Bruno Maini, vice chairman. Robert West, commissioner. Nicole Lupo, alternate. Rick Schultz, town planner. And There's have... Stroud, recording secretary. And Donna Szynski, office manager. Thank you. We have a general public participation period. At this time, if there are any members of the public that would like to address the commission on any uh, matters not before the commission tonight or not anticipated to be before the commission in the near future, uh, this would be the time to do so. Please make yourself known to the chairman at this time. Yes. Uh Chairman, this is Pete Metropolis from 36 Timothy Hill Road. Uh, I was uh, I wanted to make this commission aware that on August uh, 16th through the 21st, I was in Monroe, and I took some photographs which we sent to Donna. I'm wondering, I'm hoping she shared them with the commission. Uh, basically. The issue we have is 64 Cambridge is actively selling native natural material, and I witnessed it. We there was a fleet load of trucks coming and going the whole week of uh, August 16th, and I have video and pictures and where it went, and I find it very disturbing that uh, Arnold Carp and Carp Associates is selling this material while they are actively pursuing an inland wetlands permit to fill the crater that they are uh, emptying. You know, they're still selling material and they, you know, they're trying to get a permit to import demolition material under the guise of clean fill. And it's crazy. Um, so I sent in a citation or a, uh, a complaint and I have not heard back from the town, and I'm hoping the commission can take this issue up. Now, to be clear, this isn't about the material that they have imported during the cease and desist that is in place, which there is a lot of material. You can just ask Rick Schultz. But I'm talking specifically about trucks 
coming in empty, being loaded with not construction debris, but rocks and soil. All right. Uh, please discuss. Okay, yeah, thank time. you. All thank right, you, thank Mr. you. Thank you, Mr. Metropolis. Are there any other members of the public that would like to address the commission tonight? Any other members of the public during general public participation? Participation. If not, then we'll move on to public hearings. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. May I um, just add one other thing to the agenda? There was a 90-day time extension submitted, requested. It would be under item 10. And yes. um, it's, it's application SUB-2021-01, and it's for 515 and 529 Cutler's Farm Road for a 90-day extension request for uh, to submit the final plans. Thank you. There's a 90-day extension request yes. um, to submit final plans. The chair will entertain a motion to add this to the agenda. Motion to add a 90-day time extension to the agenda. I have a motion. I need a second. Second. Too many seconds. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion's passed. We will add that to the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. I have a request from our counsel, Barbara Schellenberg, to uh, go ahead with her presentation prior to the public hearing. This is item number 11, Mr. Chairman, if the commission is going to refer to item number 11. You have a letter in your package from Land Use Council. Yes, and I'm, um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that the commissioners have. All right, so uh, the commissioners remember, I believe, hopefully, that um, there is a uh, provision or there is language. The um, town of Monroe zoning regulations 6.4.19b that we had. Um, wait a minute, is it B? No, it's not B. Exemption 6.4.15. Fill exemptions. Um, B. And there was some controversy as to the language of this sub paragraph. Um, and I believe Barbara used the gist of the matter is that we as a commission have to decide what it means. There is no real legal opinion as to what this paragraph means. And um, there are um, precedents, legal precedents that uh, allow us to make that decision here and now. Is that correct? Uh, th that's right, um, uh, Chairman. Basically, what the law says is if the language of a regulation is clear and unambiguous, then there's no room for interpretation. Uh, what I set forth in my memo is that I believe the language of this particular regulation is ambiguous because there seems to be two sentences that contradict each other. And because the meaning is not clear, uh, what the law says is it's up to the commission to determine what the intent of the regulation is. So you should consider certainly if it has been uh, interpreted in a particular way over a period of time, that would be an, an important consideration. Uh, but you really need to look at the intent. The commission is in the best position to interpret its own regulations. So I cannot tell you what your intent uh, was when this regulation was adopted, but that's something that, that you need to do. <coughs> Thank you. Are all the commission members familiar with the language that we're talking about now? Yes. 
you want to look at mine. So what we're basically going to decide is on 6.4.15b, creating of stockpiles of material and removal of the same shall not be considered as a fill or excavation operation requiring a separate permit. Uh, sh should stockpiling of materials, other than that mentioned in part A, not to exceed 500 cubic yards, should stockpiling of materials be exempt? That's the question, I believe, that we have to answer today. So basically, it's going to be a yes or a no answer. Should stockpiling of materials be exempt from fill? What's going on? Everybody's got a mute. Says it's us making the noise. Barbara, is that you? Somebody's phone in the microphone. What's going on here? Okay, Harris. Um, the the only other, excuse me, just a moment. The only other thing I would like to add is that the commission could, should consider what is what makes sense. The regulation has to mean something, um, so you want to come to an interpretation that is a rational interpretation of what the language could mean. Yes, does this mean that we're allowing stockpiling of material? I believe, I believe that it's like, like I said before, that I believe that it's like if somebody digs up the swimming pool and they stockpile the material that we're allowed to let that sit on the property. Because it says, even on the bottom over there, it says- That's there, what it says in A, right. Right, it says in A. I believe that that's what that means. And But even in B, on the bottom of B, it says stockpiling any material is prohibited without a permit approval by commission in B. So you're of the opinion that we should- I, I'm of the opinion that that's what's what's on the material when they dig it up and say for some reason they didn't finish the pool they could stockpile their material for the pool. That doesn't mean bringing in fill and stockpiling fill. So you don't think that should be ex exempt? I I think the regulation stands as it stands. You have we have to give your opinion on whether you think it should be exempt. What should be exempt? Stockpiling of materials. I think the question is which materials you're saying. Yeah. I, have a, I have a question. The materials in B, not A. A is, is more clear. But the interpretation is where do the materials come from, the right. site or off site? Right. Mr. Chairman, what was the, do we have a history, what was the original intent when this was adopted? We don't really have a history. It was, it was written 50 million years we ago. We feel it was more or less for homeowners that are excavated. Yeah. Well, if I can add, Mr. Chairman, to that, because <clears throat> I haven't been here long, but uh, Zoning Officer Chapman has, and he's well aware of this. Uh, Mr. Chapman and I have both talked. He firmly believes the intent was to regulate stockpiling other than for homeowners when they're doing small projects like Leon was explaining, when do a pool or a regrading, he firmly believes that this commission always should have required a permit for non, for small non -res, for small residential. That was exempt for, for non-residential activities. The CEO is of the opinion that a permit is required, a filling and grading permit. Okay, and then my other next question is, when did this come up that became a red flag for us now? July 2nd, you were advised by Mr. Carp that he, he was planning to bring in material to stockpile at 64 Cambridge and his Main Street property. The commission could not come up with a consensus then and requested legal opinion. The legal opinion was received at the uh, zoning regulations subcommittee recently. The consensus of the subcommittee was to require a permit and to bring it to the full commission. The chairman now is asking for a consensus. So he's gonna ask for each and every one. We're at this point here where this commission has to make a decision <coughs> which way to go. That is correct, permit or non-permit. Thank you. So I'm trying to get a consensus. What's your opinion? 
My opinion? Yes. My opinion, I think we should regulate it as what best serves the town. So it should not be allowed, it should not be unregulated. It should be, if anything of that sort, it should come in front of us yeah. where we look at it and decide. Thank no, you. No. Commissioner Maini, do you have a, do you want to go next? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> sure. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Dominic, I have no idea what you just said. If you stockpile materials that you want them to come in front of us for. No, the regulation should be set. If there's anything that a petitioner wants to deviate, then we could look at it. So in other words, no exemption. Right. It needs to come before us, no right. exemption. Commissioner Miami. Sure. Uh, un unfortunately, as I read it, I kind of read it differently. You think it should be exempt? It just, that last sentence to me says, however, stockpiling materials is prohibited with a, without a permit and approval by commission. I'm worried about the first, I mean, the ambiguity is in the first sentence. All right, but then it shall not be considered as filled. So, unfortunately, it's written horribly. Oh, yeah, that's why we're here. And thanks. My, my parrot just said that's why we're here. Um, so it's to me, it's written horribly, and as I read it, I read it differently, unfortunately. So when I do, you feel that stockpiling of materials should be exempt from a fill uh, permit? Um, that's the question. That's the question. The um, first sentence only says 500 cubic yards, right? No, we're talking about B only. B? Yeah. A is fine. Would you like to? Ask another commissioner. Sure. Well, I mean, to me, it comes back to where the where the fill is, is coming from. If you're importing fill and stockpiling it, then I think that's a problem. If you're stockpiling uh, material that's on the site that's going to be reused potentially, it's a different story. The problem so it's, it's a tough. Either. It's, 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 yeah. Right, but we're not we're, tonight. We're not going to rewrite the um, regulation tonight. We just have to decide. I know, but it's hard to it's hard for me to give you an answer on that without having clarity as far as where the, the origin of the materials are coming from. That would have to be written into a new uh, relation. But for tonight, for the purpose of this question, do you believe that stockpiling of materials should be exempt from a permit? No. I mean, it's a simple question. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say I say no. Okay. I'm on the no part. So yeah, the way I read it is, <laughs> so the way I read it, first sentence, creating of stockpiles of materials and removal of the same shall not be considered as a fill or excavation operation requiring a separate permit. So it doesn't require a fill or excavation permit. But the second sentence says it requires, however, the stockpiling of material is prohibited without a permit approval by the commission. It basically speaks to another permit that we haven't used, a stockpiling permit. That's how I look at it is, yeah, it needs, a, it needs a permit, a stockpiling permit. One that we probably have never given out before, but it seems to be in our regulation. Excavation and fill. So, so it could no, it's a different one. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It seems like it's a different one. So maybe in that permit is where you have the different regulations that uh, Rob's talking about and kind of spells it out, but it seems like the language to me is saying that they're, they need to come in front of us, they need a permit approval by us, and it seems to be that it basically, we need to have a, there's a stockpile permit, and we need to figure out what that is and approve it or deny it. But we're not rewriting the- uh, We're not, but- tonight, so <laughs> opinion on the question at hand. Again, I mean, it's, they, they need to, it's not exempt, they need to come in front of us for a permit, it just seems to be a permit that doesn't exist at the moment. If we could rewrite it at some point, yeah. I would like to. <laughs> yeah. I think anything in a non-residential area should be subject. So unfortunately, they're not exempt until they come in front of us because the last sentence says approval by the commission. Exactly. So they need to come in front of us and get an approval for a stockpiling. All right. So I, whether it's a permit or not, that's how I see it. I agree with your yeah. two, three. I agree with the four commissioners that have spoken so far. I do not believe it should be exempt. So the predominance of opinion is no. <clears throat> okay, and Mr. Chairman, uh, we're ready to go to public hearings next. Yeah. And then I have my report. We'll go into uh, particulars of uh, my report. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That was a Barbara and. Um,
<laughs> All right, we're going to public hearings next. Public hearing. <laughs> Item number four on the agenda, SCP 2021-08, file number 1633A169 and Price Drive. Um, that will be continued in meeting at 916 So we come now to number five on the agenda, SCP 2018-03-05, number 1598A, 205 Monroe Turnpike. Do we have Monroe right? Yeah. All right. Mine's, uh, mine has the legal <laughs> a Planning and Zoning Commission, Monroe, Connecticut, notice of public hearing to be held September 2nd, 2021, in accordance with CGS 8-7D. A public hearing will be held on Thursday, September 2nd, 2021, at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter via hybrid go-to meeting. Uh, with additional access by phone and limited in-person attendees located at Monroe Town Hall, Council Chambers, 7 Fan Hill Road, Monroe, Connecticut, 06468, concerning the following. SEP 2018-03-A2, uh, number 1598A, 205 Monroe Turnpike, LOR. Permit approval amendment modification application to change previously approved square footage of 4,950 square feet to a 3,482 square feet restaurant with an accessory drive through use located at 205 Monroe Turnpike. Assessor's map 006, lot 10 slash 00. 205 Monroe Turnpike LLC owner, solely engineering LLC representative. Uh, please check the Town of Monroe website for announcements and meeting cancellations. Uh, notice was published twice in Voices on Wednesday, August 18th, 2021, and Wednesday, August 25th, 2021. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mr. Schultz, can you? Yes, uh, we have exhibits number one, uh, engineer comments, dated 18, exhibit number two, our people comments, number three, public comment. Number four, public comment. Number five, uh, Conservation and Water Resources Commission comment. Number six is revised plans of Soli Engineering. Number seven, revised engineering comments from uh, engineer dated 8-30-2021. That is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And um, let's see, we have Mr. Soli, the applicant. Good evening, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Kevin Soli. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Connecticut with Soli Engineering. Office is located uh, right here in Monroe at 501 Main Street. Um, I do have just a record keeping. I have the green cars for the proof of mailings for the public hearing. <clears throat> uh, thank you. So we're very excited to be here tonight to talk about a proposed uh, permit approval amendment modification for the approvals granted at the Town Line Plaza at 205 Monroe Turnpike. Um, we are, just to orient everybody real quick, so the site's at 205 Monroe Turnpike, just north of the Town Line of the Town of Trumbo, uh, off of uh, Route 11, just closer up, you can see the Town Line Right at Highway 25 ends at 111 here, and then the other rooms north south. <clears throat> so the site was previously approved several years ago, as you recall. Uh, construction for the Noble Gas was commenced, and that's since opened. I think it's been a great addition to the community, and we're here tonight to talk about the pad just to the north of the Noble Gas, um, to the other side of the new signalized intersection on Route 111. Um, Previously, we had previously had approved a sit-down restaurant in this location, in this pad, uh, just to the right of the entrance driveway, or to the north of the entrance driveway. And we're here tonight to talk about a proposed Panera Bread. Um, we had uh, uh, previously pr pursued this pre-COVID. COVID happened, things were put on hold and, and pause. We're very excited to uh, be here tonight to get final approvals for this proposed development which is very excited and anxious to get come to the town of Monroe. Um, assuming everything goes well tonight, the architect's ready to file for building permit as, as early as tomorrow, potentially, um, or very early next week. So we're very excited about that. Um, the project includes the construction of a approximately 3,400 square foot uh, drive through restaurant in this location here with 54 parking spaces. The site's designed with a, uh, with a, a 
conventional drive through um, with a bypass lane and also a, uh, a uh, kind of like a, a, a rapid order pickup uh, for uh, online orders that are placed where you can kind of come make an order through an app and then come to a second uh, a second window which is just behind um, window, uh, or the, here, um, where you can come up, let them know you're there, and you can hop right into the drive through line and pick up your food. Um, there are designated uh, pickup spaces within the parking lot, and also a pull forward space here to allow for uh, adequate and efficient management of people coming through the drive through um, with you know, adequate to certain customers and get them in and out efficiently. Um, we do have a bypass lane in accordance with the requirements, and we have a, uh, which essentially comes all the way up to this rapid order window, and we have room for cars to kind of scoot around there if they ever needed to, um, if there was a car at the rapid order line. Um, we have a proposed dumpster pad enclosure uh, towards the uh, northeast corner of the site in this location here, adequate loading spaces. Um, and uh, the site has gone before the architectural review board, which has received a positive recommendation, I believe, in your, in your files. Um, grading the drainage plan has been designed in accordance with the 2004 Water Quality Manual as provided by DEP, um, and everything has been designed to connect into the existing system, which has already been installed as part of the noble gas and main site drive construction. Uh, utilities are all proposed to be underground. Uh, much of that infrastructure was installed as part of the initial first phase of development, we'll be connecting. Um, underground to the proposed building here. Septic systems located in the top corner of the site in this location are based on adequate septic soils um, in accordance with the health department requirements. Um, and that will be going through the appropriate uh, approval process with the, uh, uh, both the mineral health department and also the Department of Public Health, just as the overall site uh, is more than 2,000 gallons per day of flow. Um, we have a very robust and extensive landscape plan. I think if you were to you know, if you go out to the Noble Gas, I think it's a great looking center. And our proposed landscaping associated with this project are just going to create a really, really nice um, aesthetic and environment for everyone to come and, and uh, get some really great, uh, great convenient food. Our lighting plan has been prepared in accordance with the requirements. Um, full cut off, full cut off dark sky compliant fixtures, so recessed lights, can't see the visible glare, and the adequate light levels around, around the facility. Um, from an elevation standpoint, we do have color elevations, which were included in our submission. These were reviewed um, with the uh, architectural review board. Um, this uh, project came through, as I mentioned, pre-COVID. During that time, the building footprint was a little bit different. It had a much larger or much wider facade, and there were some dark spots or some, some would argue, maybe potentially blank spots from an architectural standpoint. This new prototype, which is a brand new um, uh, Panera Cafe, which is, this will be the second location um, in the country. Um, they have a little bit of a different footprint, it's a little bit narrower across the front, and based on their architectural design, um, it really uh, creates a lot of uh, really good aesthetic. It kind of breaks up some of those empty walls. You can see it's a large glass front facade um, with um, you know, the uh, uh, power element on the right hand side, over the main entry doors, and then some additional architectural. Side, you can see the drive through. Like so. Um, so, this is looking actually from your, you're standing on Noble Gas and looking to the north. This is the elevation you would see. You can see the patio out front um, with uh, outdoor seating, some more glass along the facade and the actual pickup window. And then, obviously, we have the other, the uh, northerly elevation and the southern elevation to the rear. This is uh, the elevation which faces the opposite. From the north, looking south, and you can see the patio out from under the outdoor seating. And you know what they've done is they've really kind of created nice architectural enhancements all around the entire perimeter of the building. So it's not just blank walls with, um, uh, you know, uh, it's good, good, good building materials, which, uh, which again, I think is going to be a great addition to the uh, to the community. Um, we did have some comments from Scott, which we did reply to and respond to. He came back with a second round of comments um, uh, just last week. Um, his second round of comments, we don't really see any issues with. Um, we can certainly address the majority of them. Um, made a comment about the outlet, the bypass lane with the drive-through. And as I mentioned, I think there's, um, you know, the, just how the drive-through functions with um, uh, 
you know, full bypass lane, and then where the rapid order pickup right. speaker is, there is room for a car to kind of skate right around that if, if there what happens for the city. So I think we've met the intent of that requirement for the bypass lane. Um, we've made revisions to ensure adequate uh, um, truck circulation with the WB50. So I think that, that should have been addressed or that has been addressed. Um, he has very minor comments regarding um, just some slopes throughout the parking lot, which we we can certainly address and, and, and what his, he's looking for. He did have one comment where he was requesting, you look at our grading plan, in front of the site here, we have um, head-in parking spaces, uh, kind of right along Route 111, and then we have you know a three-to-one slope that slopes down into this large landscape area. Um, he had made a comment and requested that we install guide rail all along these parking spaces because of the presence of that three to one slope. Um, and he references, uh, uh, you know, uh, three to one slope isn't recoverable from a clear zone standpoint. So what that means is if you have a three to one slope next to a drive aisle and a car happens to like drive off the road, a three to one slope may cause that car to, to, to turn. Um, we don't really think that applies here because this is, this is at the end of like a pull in parking space. So um, imagine if a car, you know, so if a car was driving this way and there was a steep slope on the side, that would be one thing where guide rail would be appropriate. But we're just talking about the end of a parking space. So we don't believe that guide rail is, is, is needed there. Um, so that was just one comment that he did say that we should discuss with the commission. We don't, or he still recommends the guide rail. Um, we don't believe uh, it's warranted here. We request the commission not require us to put it in. Um, and then, uh, I think that's the you know that's the gist of his comments. Um, he wanted us to have the location of stockpiles and the drainage plan. That's fine. He asked for an updated survey, but again, our survey conditions really haven't changed from uh, previous approvals, other than the construction activity. There is an as-built file on record with for the noble gas, so we think that should be sufficient. Um, and he says there's no need to change the bonding requirements, other than just making sure it references this updated permit number. Um, so with that, I think it's a very straightforward and um, easy application uh, for the commission to consider. We're, we greatly appreciate all the help you guys have given us to this date. And uh, happy to answer any questions the commission may have. Thank you, Mr. Soli. <coughs> I'm going to start by calling the commissioners for questions. Probably uh, Commissioner um, Lupo. Oh, to the left. Oh, to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Um, I read through all the material and I answered all my questions. I was going to ask about the guardrail, so thank you for clarifying that. But I don't have any any other questions. Yeah, I have no questions. I don't feel that 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 guide or guardrail are, is necessary either. No questions, and I don't think you need the guardrail either. Leah, no, I'm good. I'm good. No questions. So. Basically, you came in front of us with a plan for a small, uh, larger building. Uh, we approved it. Now you want to come back and you want to change the plan and put in a smaller building. Um, is it 75 percent? Does the use does the use change? Uh, or the well, uses we've added, the same. We've added the, so the last this current standing approval 75 project. Okay. So this is requesting the approval for the drive-through use. Gotcha. And we we had approved a drive-through already, though I believe. We did. Right? Yeah. We approved a drive-through, but because of COVID, that permit was never perfected and filed on the land records, which requires us to come back before you. Gotcha. And I don't think there's anything in our regulations that say you can't come back to us. So I'm totally okay with it. I think it's a good addition to the town. So thank you. Uh, thanks for the report. I look at the plans. Um, I too don't see a need for the rail. And I don't think you need a survey because it's not been anything has been acted on. Other than that, I'm fine. Great, thank you. No questions. Um, I'm okay with the plan as well. I don't believe you need a guardrail. Um, so then uh, I'm going to take it to the public. Great. Are there any members of the public here tonight? that would like to comment on uh, the application before us, please make yourselves known. Hearing none, are there any members of the public tonight that would like to comment on this application? If not, I have uh, three comments that were um, submitted. I'd like to uh, 
brief you when reading to the record. First is from Darlene Lucial of 33 Captain's Hill Road. I want to voice my opinion that I believe the canary is exactly what this town can use, not another bank, pharmacy, liquor store, gas station, or nail salon. These are all beneficial for rendering services to the community, but the community also needs some place to embrace new experiences, a small place that provides a community location for one-to-one -one or small gatherings or friends is exactly what this um, community can benefit from. I certainly hope my opinion is taken seriously. I have lived here in the world 33 years. Thank you for your comments. Second comment is um, from Frankie Petro Jr., 348 Spring Hill Road in Monroe. Uh, within the last two years, the back of our house went from peace and quiet wooded lands with no lights or noise to an extremely bright green noble gas station that lights up the back of our house at night and protrudes in through the windows. The trucks and traffic create noise throughout the night. It's quite an eyesore. I just read in Monroe's Sun that now apparent that is going next to it along with other commercial buildings. All within two years, my taxes on the property went up $2,000. You stuck a huge line green eyesore in my backyard. And now Panera Bread is going to attract tons of traffic and noise literally to our backyard. And supposing someone needs to build a huge fence Dividing our property line from this now commercial area that was originally a peaceful wooded area or some kind of major tax break. I wouldn't be con concerned if our tax didn't go through the roof and this can really be planted. So we can't really um, address the major tax break, but um, we can look at the buffer. I think that's looking at the plan. Can you bring up your the landscape plan. Which yeah. property was it? 348. Blow that up a little bit. Hill Road. Sure. Show I got here. Between that property. So they bought a house. Property. Hmm. Let's check which one 348 is. Just so I can and Mr. Chairman, this uh, issue was brought to the attention of the property owner. And you'll hear tonight that the property owner is going to address it. So, the buffer. <clears throat> so 348 Spring Hill Road is actually located here. Um, the corner of the site here. As part of this, where we are, you know, our septic system is going up here, but we are providing um, additional plant things and buffer screenings uh, kind of in between the proposed development and uh, that property at 348 Spring Hill Road. So we have kind of incorporated that immediately along the property line and then a little bit down the hill again. This is up in the air. This is a little bit down the This is a little bit down the where he, where he exists today. There's some excavation needed to the um, proposed development. So, uh, you know, I do think we have, you know, our planting plan does include some, some you know, buffer plantings through that area. Um, and again, with the grade changes, we're going to be kind of down in the hole. We really won't be at that grade with, with that neighbor up in that corner. <clears throat> What's he at? Like 470? What is he at? Up there? He's, yeah, the. Uh, this is about. Up in this corner is about elevation 472, 473. Yep. Our proposed finished floor is all the way down at 454. So we're, we're you know, 20 feet down um, in the one gradient from where, where he is. And it, it's hard to see if you look out there today because it's kind of more of a gradual slope as you go up from, from uh, Route 111. Right. But based on how we constructed the driveway and things like that and then our connection to that, we're, we're much more lower in the ground. Um, so it's almost like he's kind of up in, the, up in the air above us. So I think our, with our with the lowering of the grades and the, the plantings that we're proposing, I think that's right. What are what plantings are you using? Sure. So we have I have a letter about that too. Oh, if you want to switch topics, maybe we could kill two birds with one stone. I have a uh, letter, a memorandum from the Town of Monroe Conservation and Water Resources Commission. Hmm. 
they would like to place on the record the following comments. Um, they have reviewed the plant, uh, the schedule, and what they found is 35% um, are non-native plants. That's 280 non-native, 519 native. Conservation Commission requests that plants native to the Northeast United States replace the non-native plants in a landscape plan. Um, there are <clears throat> two particular plants are in question. Um, they should not be planted because of their invasive potential. Um, it would be irresponsible to support using two plants that have been found to be invasive in other states. They are the aristocrat pear, which is listed as an invasive in several states, including Rhode Island. It is also on the Connecticut invasive plant research list, but it's not currently banned in Connecticut. It's not really invasive in Connecticut. The second is maiden grass. It is listed as an invasive in many states. It is listed as potentially invasive by the Connecticut intensive by the Connecticut invasive plant working group. Um, so they are requesting that these two um, plants, in particular, and all of 35% non-native plants, be replaced by native plants. So, <clears throat> yes. I just want to give you an input. Um, I mean, we should listen to those requests very carefully. Um, from my experience, and I'm not a botanist or anything like that, but some native plants attract items like caterpillar and things of that sort that make it, if you have fruit trees or certain kind of trees, deadly to it. So we should introduce some of them, but not to the extent of 35 or 40 percent like they're requesting. Just keep that in mind that they do destroy other trees. Right, invasive. Correct. Thank you. No natives. You natives. Know. Natives. Just natives can attract a lot more bugs and. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, pests. Very, I think that's very, what they very, want. Very, just I mean, doesn't want them. I, I like to grow fruit trees. We attack them, and one of the things that to prevent that is to keep down some native plants. We want to introduce them, but to, to a certain point. And that's kind of what they're doing now, though, right? They're using 35%. I think 35% non-native. A little bit more. Non-native now. 65% native. And, and uh, just to, to speak to that, I know that the commission and the subcommittee had some recent uh, presentations regarding the use of native plants and the native cultivars. Um, I, I've charged my landscape architect team to kind of pull together a presentation to present to you to kind of just give you some more information regarding this, some of that because a lot of the times as, as uh, Commissioner Panuccia mentioned, um, the true native plants, um, while they're great and they're native, um, there's been a lot of advancements with cultivars where they're using those native plants but they're enhancing them with, with you know, uh, other, um, introducing some other stuff to make them less drought resistant and less pest resistant more pest resistant and stuff like that, resistant to diseases and things like that. So the, so the, the concept of only native and non-native, not even allowing native cultivars, we don't necessarily think will yield the results that I think the commission and the community would really want. Um, so I want, I've asked my landscape architecture team to kind of like prepare something together just to give you some more information on that. So as you move forward with your discussions regarding native plants and requirements and things like that, you kind of have all the arguments because and the other thing is a true native plant you know they may they may create native cultivars which just look a lot nicer it's still the same plant but it's going to grow more robust it's going to have better fruit better flowers better color things like that so i don't think that's necessarily something that the commission would want to really consider prohibiting um uh you know regarding some of the other questions regarding the trees that we're proposing for for, for buffer plantings we have um, black spruce, we have Colorado blue spruce, we have, uh, you know, in terms of some of the larger evergreen trees that will kind of create some of that buffer. And then we have a, no a, a number of other um, kind of more 
understory trees and, and things like that, which will help provide additional um, screening from some of the surrounding properties. Thank you. Thank you. Answer your question. Yes. All right. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? Well, how about the two that they're really concerned about? So potentially invasive and yeah. invasive in surrounding states. Sure. So so um, some of those, and I know this this commission is, has has heard other applications where they've talked about um, some ground cover plants, which could be considered invasive. Um, I think I think is one that comes to mind. When, when when a landscape architect, and I'm not a landscape architect, and my landscape architect could be here this evening, but when they're doing plant selections, and one of the ones mentioned was was uh, a pear tree. Now, a pear tree <clears throat> island in a parking lot, say, you know, here, will create a really nice aesthetic. It'll create some shade around the parking lot, and, and, and it's not something that's going to become invasive and then just spread everywhere. That's kind of not how some of these things really spread. Now, if it happens to you know, if somehow something got planted in the woods and it's left unchecked and it's left unmaintained, maybe that would kind of create some, you know, invasiveness. But I think from from a design standpoint and from a you know plant selection standpoint, where we're proposing to, to put these trees and, and how the center will be maintained, we don't really see that as a potential issue that, that would create a problem, um, you know, for the surrounding areas or even the So these two plants they're talking about are not in, they're in islands? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I think, which one did they mention? They mentioned uh, some pear or something or another. Uh, yes. Grass. grass, yeah. Yeah, so so those grasses are, again, they're in, those are definitely in islands surrounded by pavement because it just creates a nice ground cover and a nice, you know, good color aesthetic. It's not something that's, it's not like we're planting the perimeter with this grass to let it go run wild. Um, it's really more of a- It was a pear a, tree or something, wasn't it? Yes, he, that's the first one he addressed. Right, so they're all in islands. I think most of the invasive species, he said they're in islands. I think most of the, con I thought most of the concern with invasive species is when it's going into like wetland uh, rebuilding or uh, like reconstructing forests and not necessarily something, you know, I technically your vegetable garden isn't, it's all, you know, so it's, it just seems strange that we're talking about natives again which still isn't part of our regulation but we keep bringing it up and then i'm not really well, comfortable it up because we have a, uh, a letter uh, yeah I, I know but then and i'm not really comfortable considering invasive species to be invasive because rhode island says they are and they're not invasive here yet i mean we're not i don't think we're the authority on that um, if Connecticut were to say list in Connecticut, yeah, but they are, the fact that these aren't on there aren't on. is a little, you know, I don't like the idea that, you know, oh, it's invasive in Texas or Rhode Island or whatever. It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't really understand why that's something we would consider. Um, if it was invasive in Connecticut, then it would be something to talk about. Well, if it's invasive in, in Connecticut, it's actually illegal to plant, transplant, sell, or move. Yeah. So th they wouldn't even come here unless it was a if you have a landscape architect, they, they know that that is. So we're only final the landscape. We're talking about these potential. Eat the pears? Uh, I don't. I'm not sure. Actually. Why don't you try? Okay. I just didn't know Panera was going to do I some sort they, of like they really they pear thing. Pear, but they don't bear fruit. Right. They it's flower. flower. They flower. Right. It's that white flower street <laughs> tree you see. Right. You should try a couple of the flowers and let me know what happens. trees. So in the presentation that we heard at, at our the subcommittee meeting, meeting it really had to do with it abutting water courses. Right. So I don't know. I don't think it necessarily applies to this situation. So I have no problem with those trees going there. Islands. Okay. Did you want to sum up then? No, I think you know. I think uh, we're it, it. It's been a long road with this project, and I think we're really, really excited that we're finally here with this final plan for Panera. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's going to be a great addition to to you know to, to Noble Gas, which I think has been a great addition to the community. Um, we're excited that with this is hopefully going to spur um, the additional activity towards the rear of the site. Um, and uh, you know, we respectfully request, request, request the commission. You know, if it pleases you to, to approve this application tonight so we can move forward with construction. All right. I have, uh, sorry, sorry. One more question. The back buffer behind Panera, is that something that can go in during the Panera construction or is that? 
looking at one of the other phases for that? Yeah, well, I think I think as part of the installation of this, you know, they're going to want their area kind of established. And okay. Yeah, I mean, just because you know, he did talk about the Noble gas station and how he can see that. So, you know, be nice to the neighbor. You guys tend to. So make sure those go up. Hey, Mr. Chairman, um, staff is working with Noble Gas on the lighting. So there's two issues here: the visual, and then the lighting. Noble Gas is very receptive. We're working with them to cut down on the glare. As you know, we have black light, we, you know, uh, night light. Oh, dark sky. Dark, dark sky. sky. Plus my <laughs> train of thought. We have might have a night. Compliant, but you still can see, red. you know, you still can see the glare. So they are working with staff. Okay. All right. Thank you. Then uh, if there are no other questions, we'll close this hearing. Well done. And then we'll move right on to uh, the next public hearing, which is number six on the agenda. This is one of our town projects, SEP 2021-10, file number 16358, the Housatonic Valley Rail Trail, section two and Okay, Mr. Chairman, the section eight, 24, our own municipal, our from the town council, and I uh, believe Rick has, uh, yeah, we're going to do the presentation, with Scott, tonight in the public hearing. The A24 referral will be a separate issue that we'll take up later. And uh, this was continued from the July 1st meeting, and we have not received any new exhibits. So Scott is on. Okay, Rick, thank you. Um, for the record, my name is Scott Schatzwein. I am the town engineer, and in this case, I'm also the project manager. Uh, with me this evening is Antonio Di Camillo. Antonio is a, an engineer with Stantec Consulting Services, and they are providing the design services for the project. So, uh, as Rick said, this is a project for uh, the Housatonic Valley Rail Trail uh, System, Sections 2 and 3. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, it's uh, the last linkage, the last connection of trail uh, in Monroe uh, that will be connecting the existing sections of trail between the terminus that's in Wolf Park. Uh, it'll be running through Wolf Park in a southerly direction, across uh, Purdy Hill Road, run behind what used to be the bus barn and, and is currently the um, public works facility. Uh, run behind that through some state property up to um, Maple Drive and then connect up to the existing trail that is at the existing footbridge that runs over the West Aquatic River. The uh, current status of the project is that we are in preliminary design. We currently have an application that's before the Inland Wetlands Commission and uh, they have not had their hearing yet on this. So uh, we're gonna be at, we, we are asking that this hearing be held open until we get that uh, information or, or a decision from them. Uh, so uh, again, we'll, we'll ask that you keep this hearing open. Um, we will uh, be then getting the permits, the rest of the permits, uh, any uh, non-local permits from Army Corps and the state of Connecticut, et cetera, uh, and then moving on to bidding and, and construction. Um, this project, uh, just for your information, this project is 100% funded through uh, LOTSIP, which is the Local Transportation Capital Improvement Program. Uh, we have a commitment to fund for that, so we're all set with construction money. We also have a grant through the Connecticut Recreational Trails Program. Uh, that grant pays for 80% of the design services and uh, there's a 20% match. And of that 20% match, we have the ability to provide services uh, in lieu of fee. Uh, so we're trying to do that to also keep the cost down. So a uh, great thing, we get to finish our uh, trail network in town and uh, the cost is low. There is one other section of trail that is not in place at the moment. Uh, that is currently under construction with the Pepper Street reconstruction project. Uh, that should be completed 
either the end of this year or early next year. Uh, with that, uh, that's just a brief summary uh, of things. Um, I'm going to ask that uh, Antonio uh, continue. He's got a uh, PowerPoint presentation. He'll give you a little more detail uh, on uh, the project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Scott. Um, so if I could be made um, the presenter, uh, thank you. All right, thanks, Scott. Um, so um, you gave um, obviously a good um, intro here. So I'm going to um, go through some of these slides um, at the beginning here. Um, let me just get this going here. There we go. Okay. Um, so again, uh, we're starting um, over at Maple, just south of Maple Drive, continuing uh, north um, through Wolf Park, and we're ending and connecting um, the project over. Um, where the parking lot is existing uh, near the pond um, in Wolf Park. Um, so I'm going to go through in a little more detail kind of what the route uh, looks like here. So this is where, we're, where the project is going to start. Again, just south of Maple Drive, we're connecting to an existing uh, trail system that is in this area. Uh, we're going to enter this parcel here, which is owned by Connecticut Deep. Uh, mm -hmm. The trail is then going to cross an existing um, bridge um, over a water course here. We're not really doing anything to the bridge. We're just upgrading. Uh, some of the fencing and the railings for that area. Uh, we're going to continue north uh, and then make a connection um, to Maple Drive over in this area here. Um, and then we have an area where we are crossing uh, the wetlands. It's a very tight spot. Uh, we're very close to our private property. Um, so we are going to be crossing this area by installing segmental block walls to kind of limit the impact uh, to the wetlands. It's kind of also a steep area. Um, very tough to deal with. We also have a pipe crossing here. Um, so that is how we're going to be handling this area. Uh, we're going to continue north and enter the um, the DPW uh, area here. And in this area here, we're going to basically hug the wetland um, and also try to, um, you know, be between, you know, to try to impact the DPW yard as little as possible. Um, so here's where we come out of that area. Here's Purdy Hill Road. Um, after this, we are going to go east. Um, as I mentioned before, we're going to be installing a um, chain link fence in this area here to basically separate the trail uh, from the DPW yard. Um, we're going to replace an existing head wall in this area. And we're also going to have some drainage improvements that you'll see um, in uh, the slides coming up. Um, and then we come on to uh, Purdy Hill Road. Uh, there is no crosswalk here at this moment, so we are going to be installing a new crosswalk. Um, we are also going to be installing some uh, rapid flashing beacons here. So, and I'll show you a little detail of that as we come up a little bit later. So basically people come up to this area and they press the button and, you know, they have these solar powered flashing beacons that, you know, warn the people, uh, the drivers that, you know, folks are, are gonna be crossing, so. Um, as we head north from Purdy Hill Road, we're entering uh, Wolf Park. And then we are uh, pretty much entirely in Wolf Park in this area here. Uh, one thing that I wanted to note as we're crossing through this area here is um, the intent of the, of the project is to uh, disturb as little um, you know, trees and vegetation as possible. So we are trying to really keep the trail at grade. In some areas that's possible, in some areas it's not. This area specifically here, there are a lot of um, dead and um, and uh, um, trees that are, you know, diseased and are not in good shape. So actually this specific area here is actually going to be good that we clear some of those out. Um, but again, the intent is really to try to stay on grade as much as possible. Uh, we're going to continue north. And this is where we really kind of start to get into a, a very tight area where uh, the grades get really tricky. Uh, we have the drive, the access drive in this area here and the wetlands. So we basically have to, you know, go through this pocket. It's fairly steep and rocky in this area. So this is where we're going to be introducing some segmental block walls. Um, and we're going to be installing a, um, a guardrail on top um, of those walls to make sure that we get through these areas. Uh, continuing north from here, again, we have a couple of more walls here. Um, we come uh, to this area here where we there's a current um, gravel parking lot here. We're going to be providing a, um, a connection to that area there. 
Um, there are also, you know, other amenities and existing trail systems in here that we're also connecting into. And um, uh, here you see uh, one of the um, culvert crossings that we have on here. Basically, we're going to be extending whatever drainage comes from the road. We're going to be extending it under the trail, um, you know, with a pipe. We're also proposing uh, some sediment uh, pools upstream of these areas to, um, you know, to retain some sediment prior to um, discharging across um, across the trail. As we continue north here, we have a, we have a couple of more pipe crossings. Um, and then we come to the uh, end point of our trail here near the, um, the existing parking lot. And this is where we, we are going to connect to the trail, the existing trail that you see here that is across, um, across the drive. So that is um, the overview of the, of the trail route. And I'm gonna go through just a couple of quick um, highlights of other things that we have on here. So uh, th this is a typical detail of what um, you know, the segmental block wall is gonna look like. We're still working through you know, what color and, and shapes and stuff like that. Scott and I are kind of working through all that, but obviously you know, we're gonna have a, um, you know, a guardrail up in this area here. Here is your typical section for the trail. It's going to be uh, 10 foot wide stone dust with one foot, um, one foot shoulders. These are the rectangular flashing beacons that I mentioned before. Um, we've used these in several several projects, um, DOT and, and also local projects. Um, again, it's got a push button. Um, they're solar powered, um, and that's um, you know they they work fairly well in the couple of trail projects that we've um, we've used them in. And this is the um, the detail for the wood fence that we're going to be using on top of um, on top of the walls and also in other areas that are um, that are steep that sort of warrant this. Uh, so some other project considerations here: anticipated permits. Um, I think you've heard about the A24 inland wetlands. We're in inland wetlands right now. We're going to be having our um, our meeting fairly soon. Um, and we also have you know uh, our Army Corps permit that we're going to be doing for the uh, wetland disturbance and uh, Connecticut Deep uh, Inland Wetlands General Permit. I've been discussing with Deep on that um, over the last few days, actually. So we're, we're gearing up to get that um, to get that in as soon as possible. Uh, some other project considerations to think about here. So we have a few interesting things in the project. Uh, we do have an archeological consultant uh, that was hired uh, with us because there are some areas here that, um, that have um, some archeological value there um, near the bridge uh, near Maple Drive, there are some um, some old ruins that um, have uh, archaeological value that we are going to be, you know, avoiding. So as of now, there should be no impact to those um, as we work uh, through that archaeological investigation. Uh, we also have an env environmental investigation that's ongoing. This is for um, the DPW area. It's, um, you know, we're going to do some some soil testing to see if we need to. Um, uh, handle some materials uh, over in that area during construction, you know, special handling or hauling off site or, or, or things of that nature. So again, that's ongoing right now. The floodplain review is going to be done um, through uh, the planning and zoning uh, submission. Right here, I have a, a picture of the female floodplain. The area that, that it, uh, the map floodplain is, um, um, is impacting, you know, the project uh, is uh, the DPW yard has a floodway and a floodplain in that area. Uh, however, after you know looking at it um, closely, what we did is we we plotted the uh, the flood elevation from the FEMA map on our plans, and we are actually doing all our work above that elevation. So there should not be any impacts to any any floodplains or, or floodways um, for the project. Drainage improvements. I mentioned a little bit about the pipes that we're putting in. Um, again, all the pipes are sized to the 25-year storm per your regulations, and uh, we're also including some um, some sediment traps upstream of those. Um, right now there is no treatment so we're, we are providing some treatment for that um, and the construction for the project uh, is anticipated to start in uh, March 2022 right now we're um, you know heavy in the final design and the permits um, so as soon as we kind of get that stuff um, going we're going to be looking to um, you know hopefully uh, you know wrap this up and, and get it built so that's all I have if you have any questions Antonio, I, I wanted to add that um, the trail network, the profile of the trail is going to uh, meet all ADA requirements. Um, right, so, correct. Um, yep, that is correct. Yep. And the other thing I wanted to add was that, um, uh, Rick, we were assuming that this presentation also uh, will 
address uh, the 8-24 uh, figure that it, it'll do both uh, simultaneously. Um, I don't know, you hadn't indicated that, but I'm, I'm assuming, uh, let me know if, if we need to provide additional information later on for that, uh, or if we're good as far as that goes. Yeah, I, I, Scott, I think, you know, with this presentation, the commission will be prepared to make a finding to the town council. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you, Scott. Are there any questions here? First, we'll poll the commissioners, starting on my right. Dominic. Uh, no questions. No question. I just one small question regarding the base. On the, how, how many inches of stone dust did you say we're going to put in? So right now we're planning on four inches of stone screenings on eight inches of granular fill. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, so I just want to go back to, I guess, where the trail is going to be going, um, I guess, from the bridge in Wolf Park. Is that over the existing trail that's already there? I believe there's like an Eagle Scout trail uh, that was built along the water, or is this a second one? There, there is a trail along the um, that runs along the Toa Slope and along that uh, wetland and, and a pond area. That's the, I believe it's the blue trail. And I think what you're referring to is the scouts clean that out. And um, yes, this trail will actually take the place of that for a short section. And then uh, the, the remaining portion of that trail will stay in place. It runs over to the dam uh, for this, the, the pond area. Um, so that the rest of it will stay in place. Okay, perfect, thank you. Commissioner Ambrosi. I have no question. Commissioner Miley. No question. Will the it sounds like a uh, you know it's a great project. Will the will the trail be passable during the work? The trail will not be passable during the work. That where we're putting the trail in, there is no uh, passage at the moment. What happens right now is. People are going down Dock Silverstone Drive, the entrance drive to the park. They're crossing Purdy Hill and they're going down Maple Drive. Right. Um, there, the only place that we're going to have to accommodate uh, through traffic is that short section from Maple Drive to where we're connecting in just south of the uh, bridge. And that's a good point. I, I think what we hadn't really thought about that, but I think we um, we will make some accommodations that. The work in that area will be fairly minimal, so um, we'll discuss that and see if we can figure out a way to safely allow for people to get through that very short section. Sounds good, because you know they're going to be going through there either way, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Commissioner Lupo. Um, one question. I think it's great, and I, as someone that bikes that often with my kids crossing over where we do now scares me. So I'm glad to see we're going to make it a little bit safer, a lot safer. Um, one question is where it crosses over from the new to the old when you're inside Wolf Park, will there be any lights there to warn drivers that are coming in and out that people are going to be crossing or that there's a new traffic pattern there for people crossing? Well, at the, at the moment, we don't have the um, crossing system that we are proposing for the uh, street. I don't know if it would qualify under the funding program. Um, usually, you get involved with that type of that level of uh, warning system in a, uh, a roadway. This is just an entrance drive. Um, we, Antonio, I'm not remembering. Do we do we have any signs in this? Uh, for we, you know, in the actual current plans, I don't think we have any pedestrian crossing signs, but we absolutely should add those. So I think we do have, it doesn't show up on here, but we do have a striped crosswalk here. Um, but I think what we can do is, and I agree with you, Scott, that the, you know, the, the flashing lights are more for, you know, roadways. Um, I think we certainly should be adding, um, you know, at least some pedestrian crossing signs to either side of, um, of the driveway here. Yeah, it's another great comment, and uh, we can incorporate that into the project. 
right, thank you. No other questions. Yeah, cool. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to open this up to the public. If there are any members of the public here tonight that would like to comment on this application, um, please make yourselves known at this time. Again, any members of the public that would like to comment? If not, then um, back to you, Scott, to wrap it up. Yeah, okay, I'd like to thank the commission. Uh, I, unless you have any other questions, uh, that is the project. Uh, we are very happy and excited to bring this project uh, to the town and, and get some closure on, on constructing this trail and get some people out there and having fun uh, using it. Awesome, thank you. Um, I don't think we can close this because there's no inland wetlands, correct? Right, Mr. Chairman. We're, we're going to probably be, be continue this to the October 21st meeting. All right. Terrific. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, yep. Darren. Well, we're going thank to uh, celebrations and determinations. Uh, number seven on the agenda is the um, Minutes of August 5th. Everyone has a copy. The August 5th minutes. Chair, and a motion to accept the minutes as drafted. Make a motion to accept the minutes as drafted. Motion. I need a second. Second for me. Board. Motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Is I here for that one? Uh, yes. Yes. So Riley, Ooh, Amy Condon, sure. and Rosie and Weston. I was in. Lupo is out. Lupo out. Uh, uh, page two, halfway down, there's like a comma, and it says applicant. So I don't know if that just needs to be edited as a typo. Yeah, just comma applicant. So put the. Yeah. See that on page two, Mike. Yes. We can add that in, the, 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 okay. The first time in how many years we had? <laughs> uh, roll. Starting with the uh, right. Condon. Uh, Condon, yes. Ambrosi, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Laney, yes. Westland, yes. And therefore, anonymous. Moving along, pending application determinations and deliberation. Um, I would like to deliberate on the application that we heard tonight. The uh, SP 2018 03 02 205 Menor Turnpike. All right, so um, start the discussion. Um, I know I heard a few of you saying that you did not feel a guardrail should be a requirement. The other issue is the um, potential invasive plantings. Anybody have any uh, comments or do you want to go ahead and address that? I don't have an issue with either. Anyone? I don't have an issue with either. No. Yeah, no. no comments. Seems fine to me. All right. So then uh, we'll direct staff to write up an approval. I don't uh, have one, do you? Well, actually, I, I prepared one. Uh, Look at if, you. Well, that's a, if, if the commission wants me to read it. Yes. Read it. Read it. You have a few. You have one copy or that's it? Yeah, I just have one copy. I didn't know. already has the machines on site. Let's go read that off. Why don't you just oh brief God. us? Uh, whereas the Planning and Zoning Commission is considering an application for special exception permit approval amendment modification. That's uh, a long mouthful. Approval for the following 3,546 square foot restaurant with two drive through lanes and outdoor patio area. Previously approved was for 4,950 square foot building. Hold uh, on, hold on a second. You said how much? Previously it was four thousand nine fifty. Three and the new one? Three thousand five four six. Because in here it says four three thousand four eighty two. Three thousand five four six minutes. Um, in the agenda. agenda. In the agenda. Okay. Two separate numbers. Come on, Sully. 
Three four eight two. Thank you. That's and the previous was four nine fifty. <clears throat> yes. The master property consists of eight point five three acres, located on the westerly side of Monroe Turnpike Route one eleven within the limited office retail district (LOR). Whereas in the course of the review of the application, the commission noted the following. Fronting and access is from uh, Monroe Turnpike. Site is located within 500 feet of the Trump Trumbull town boundary. Site is not located within a public watershed area. Site is not subject to a conservation easement and does not include areas of 100 year floodplain. Site does, uh, does contain wetlands water course and associated 150 foot upland review areas. A favorable review by the Monroe Architectural Review Board was received. The proposed activity will require modification of a Connecticut DOT ASTA uh, permit. Site is served by public water and an on site septic disposal system. Whereas the Commission has considered the proposed application at a duly noticed public hearing, opened and closed on September 2nd, 2021. Notice of the public hearing was filed in the Monroe Town Clerk's Office and published in the voices, whereas the public hearing notice was sent to the abutting property notice within 100 feet of the subject property as evidenced by the submission of certified mail receipts, whereas the application was sent to the town of Trumbull and, there, and now therefore be resolved the commission in accordance with section 8.2.2 .2 of the zoning regulations hereby finds the following in respect to the special exception permit general standards. The proposed act action is consistent with the plan of conservation and development, location, nature, height, and design of the proposed structure upgrades associated with the principal building are consistent with applicable LOR district standards. Proposed exterior lighting will be dark sky compliant. Proposed facilities uh, include uh, anticipated uh, provisions to prevent glare, intensity, or flashing of light, fumes, smoke, dust, vibration, or noise. The site will be served by public water and a subsurface sanitary septic system. E, compliant all street parking, including ADA compliant space drive through lanes with individual menu boards and loading facilities are proposed. And the commission in accordance with section 8.1 and 7.1 of the zoning regulations hereby finds uh, upon motion following deliberation on September 2nd, 2021, in favor uh, to approve special exception permit approval, amendment modification for SCP 2018-03A5 file 1598A uh, with the following conditions, adherence to the recommendations of the town engineer with the exception of the guide rail and as built info. Be it further resolved the approvals specific solely to that detained heroin. Be it further resolved the commission hereby authorizes the publishing and filing of the notice of decision. And be it further resolved as set forth above this approval be subject to the uh, following noted uh, conditions. So a uh, motion is in order, then a second and a roll call, Mr. Chairman. Joe, a motion for right approval. I'll make a motion to approve SEP 2018-03A2, file number 1598A205, Monroe Turnpike. I have a motion, I need a second. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, Call the roll. Stein of my right. On my right. Condon, yes. Ambrose, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Maney, yes. Westland, yes. The ayes have it. Passes unanimously. Now you got to build it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The machine's already there, dude. <laughs> they, they might be working right now. You don't even know. <laughs> Okay, we have a few other items. Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, as noted, this is the second facility in the United States 
Mike, do you know, is the one under construction in St. Louis or? Yes, there are about Baldwin Bill, yeah. Baldwin Bill was about 60 days there. Oh, 60 days, okay. Uh, I'll get a photograph for the commission and uh, email it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got to build it before them. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, be the first. <laughs> That's interesting to note, the first one in New England. Uh, Hey, on other business, we have number nine subdivision, East Coast. Number 07-4, file 1242C, Mount Laurel Estates, a two cottage street, Sandbar Road. So if you remember, I believe the commission um, handouts on the new bridge. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting that we table discussion until the next meeting. Additional information is provided to the town engineer and the director of public works. I just have one question. Um, the road, will that be a town road? Yes. It will be, okay. It will be a permanent cul-de-sac with two crossings. Thank you. And this was the steel. Versus the, pre right. steel versus the precast. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll table this till uh, the next meeting. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I have a uh, request for an extension. SDP 2020-05, file number 145-195, one and 211 Main Street. Letter from David Hoops. Here, Rick, we request a 60-day time extension to submit the final site plan. The deadline expires. The reason is that the applicant is in the process of obtaining an encroachment permit from Connecticut uh, DOT. Um, Which property was this? 201 to 11 Main Street. Rick, was that the one where they're bringing the fill from across the street? No, it's uh, Kevin. Where's two? Where's two or one? That's senior housing. Yeah. Oh no, that's the uh, yeah. That's uh. It's just a living. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's on the yeah the left side right before the. Yeah. Right before yeah. It's the old skate time. Old skate time. Yeah. Yeah. Senior housing. A DOT permit there. That's right. Because they have permit. that the special road there. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so we need a motion. I make a motion. SDP 2020 05 file. Number 145 slash 195 201 211 Main Street to grant 60 day extension. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Nope. If not, I'll vote. Condon, yes. Ambrosi, yes. Riley, yes. Fain, yes. Westland, yes. Motion passes. Second, SCP 2021-02, file number 1627A98, Enterprise Drive. What's this? Request a nine-day extension to for <clears throat> A of approval, December 3rd, 2011. And uh, do we have a letter on that? I barely know where my house is. Wait, do you have a letter on there? We have a letter on there. Uh, 98 Enterprise Drive. So you don't have a letter? Properties. Wait a minute. The chairman, hopefully, I don't have a letter. On the corner. Nobody has a letter. I think they were. Uh, talk to me, Rick. What do they want? Connect. 90 day extension. For what reason? To fulfill condition of approval. They're I can approving. read that, dude. No, they're fi finishing, finalizing the plans. Oh, thank you. Who was this? What was the property? Yeah, what were they doing there? Oh, that's the uh, landscaper. Oh, the one down the hill? Yeah. The down the bottom of the hill? Yeah. Number one. This is an old one. You keep yeah. This has been going on for uh, years. Oh, uh, yeah. So he has the building is down there? Yeah. For, for uh, the land with the pad, the concrete pad? Yep, gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hey, all right. You need a motion? Do you still have all the equipment parked down there? Of course it does. Okay. So hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's a violation, no? Yeah, and uh, we're uh, working on that. 
Oh, so hold on a second. So we're going to, we could potentially grant him a 90 day extension, but he still got violations on this property. Well, it's a separate issue. Zoning enforcement's a separate issue from your. I understand it's a separate issue, issue, but. Make it so that this doesn't go on for the next 10 years. That's right. the only, you know. I mean, how long have they been trying to fulfill condition A? Mm -hmm. Year. That's on this application, but there's been other applications, right? We don't have to give them 90. I understand, but if we give them 30, they're going to come back in 30 for another 90. And What's the issue with it, Rick? Just, just finalizing the plans. I mean, he, how long have they been doing that? A year. How many years? Because yeah, of COVID. The COVID is where we really messed them up. I understand that. But yeah, I believe so. How long have they extended this? How many times? No, this is the first time. First time on this application. They came back this with application. Several applications, Several applications right. leading up to this. Yeah. I mean, not to. How are they moving along here? Have they been in contact with you? Yeah, they, they've been talking to Joe uh, Chapman. Yeah, that's my understanding. So, so Joe Chapman, Chapman about what? Then about one another. needing the extra time to fulfill everything. One of us. So staff's recommending approval, and, we'll, and I'll give you a report at the next meeting. All right. Okay. So uh, you think we should grant a 90-day extension? Yeah, Joe Chapman recommended that the staff, that the commission approve the 90-day, and I'll give you a, an extension. I mean, a uh, report on the extension. Could I mean, is this is it unreasonable to get it done in sixty days? I, I would do the ninety days. So come back. I'll give you a report. If they come back in ninety days, can we request they come in front of us? Of course you can. All right. Yeah, no, we could do that. Yeah. So All right. Have a motion. Make a motion. SEP twenty twenty one dash o two file number one six two seven a ninety eight Enterprise Drive to approve a ninety day extension. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, call the roll. Condon, yes. Rebrosi, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Rainey, yes. Westland, yes. Motion passes. We have uh, we have this one, too. A letter. You did the add on the 90 day for Cutler's Farm Road? Right. This has been added to the agenda. This is a also a 90 day extension request. This is SUB 2021 1. It's 515, 529 Cutler's Farm Road. Uh, this is a 90 day extension to submit final plans. The new date would be December 15th, 2021. And I don't have a letter on this one. That's the church property. Remember, we, the commission approved it? Yeah. They need 90 more days to finish plans? 90 days. Well, they're just dragging their feet on it, you know, to record the map. This is recording of the Mylar map. Okay. You can give them two extensions. This is the first one. Yes. Yeah, Chairman O'Reilly, I believe, yeah, that they were, the church itself was was trying to, um, they were in the process of either hiring a professional or working with the professional to get the maps done. It, it has to go to the church council, so I think that was the holdup. It wasn't anything, but they, they had to go through their due process. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Like these guys. They okay. Well, I get stuff done. And I delayed. think that's reasonable to give them a nine-day extension. I have a motion. Sure. Make a motion to extend ninety days to SUB twenty twenty one dash oh one five. Was it five fifteen? Five fifteen five twenty nine Cutler's Farm Road. Did I, miss a, did I miss any numbers? Second for me. Got it. Motion and a second. I'll call the roll. Condon, yes. Rosie, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Main, yes. Westland, yes. Motion passes. Um, next on the agenda, we have the under the Visitonic Rail, Visitonic Valley refer. Rail Trail. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, add it as a uh, referral. Yeah, make a motion to add it because it's a correction. All right. You need a motion to add this item. That's right here. We're, we're, uh, uh, we're replacing a. Uh, it's, it's not the cell tower. Yeah. We did that the last time. It's there was a, yeah, that, that, that was a uh, error on trail, which we just heard. Uh, so I need a motion to change the agenda. I'll make a motion to change the agenda from the 8-24 referral for the cell tower to the 8-24 referral for Housatonic Rail Trail. I have a motion. A second. I have a second. Um, any discussion on that? Oh, we're just going to go ahead and... Uh, well, I'll read the letter for the record from the town council. Okay. It's addressed to the chairman. On August 16th, in accordance with the standards and procedures set forth 
in Statute 8-24 Municipal Improvements, the Town Council voted affirmatively to refer the above reference matter to the PNZ Commission for its review and report. Uh, this project will, con will construct a 10 foot wide stone dust trail that will begin at the southerly end of the existing pedestrian bridge over the West Paquanic River, just south of Maple Drive, continue north behind the public works facility across Purdy Hill Road and through portions of Wolf Park until it reaches the existing trail segment located at the north end of the Wolf Park entrance drive off Purdy Hill. The total trail length is approximately 4,600 linear feet. Project includes installation of the trail, retaining walls, protective fencing, mid-block crossing at Purdy Hill Road, tree removal to necessitate trail placement, replacement and enhancement landscaping plantings, including trees, grass restoration, and some directional and control signage. Thank you in advance for your consideration of this referral. The Town Council looks forward to a report from your commission, Jonathan Vermicelli, Town Council Chair. So, Mr. Chairman, the uh, Town Council is looking for a recommendation, and staff is, is recommending a favorable recommendation. Sweet. Yes. No. And we can do that without regard to the wetlands for the actual. Yes. Right. No. All right. Great. So the motion is to report favorably to the town council. Mm -hmm. Motion? Yes. Just a second. Motion, please. I'll make a motion to report favorably to the town council 8 24 referral for the Housatonic Rail Trail. And a second? Second. Motion and a second. And roll the roll. Condon, yes. Ambrosi, yes. Riley, yes. Wayne, yes. Westland, yes. Motion passes. Um, I'm going to go to commissioner reports at this point, Rick. We're skipping over 11. Well, we started 11. I think we're going to finish 11 with Rick's comments. Correct? Yeah, you're going to go. I'm going to take that up in Tom Planner's report. So we have chairman's report. You want to report on the uh, zoning regulations subcommittee, interior lots, and uh, yeah, we're discussing interior lot. Um, we don't have a we don't have a uh, permissive interior lot regulation. Um, so we are working on one which we'll bring before the full commission at some point. That's all I have to report. Right, and the second matter was the uh, was the stockpiling and that was discussed tonight. The consensus was that a permit is required. Are we doing another subcommittee meeting? And we do need another subcommittee meeting. I'm going to uh, send out a request to the chairman and then uh, so everyone, how's everyone's Mondays looking good in the in Not September? How do your Mondays look? I'm pretty good. Right. Yeah, I'm fine. Everyone's good on the subcommittee. Okay. Honestly, Tuesdays are better, but but if Monday works for everyone else, I'll I'll conform. I I prefer Tuesday. Me too. But that's just me. Mr. Chairman, is Tuesday okay, or you like Mondays or? No, oh, Tuesday's okay with me. Either day for me. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Good. Leon, Tuesdays work for you. Hey, my son from Hartford, so I have to drive sometimes, and I don't want to get. Oh, so I don't we'll want to get uh, talk about the dates. Nicole, how are you on Tuesday? Moving forward. That's not so good. Um, that's it. Not We're not good. Not on the commission anyway. Ouch! <laughs> Turn. <laughs> You're just, you're just you're just our number one guest. <laughs> any of the commissioners have any reports? Tom? Oh, that's awesome and funny. And officially so welcome uh, our new member. Yeah. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Another Dominic? Yeah. With an E. Oh. With an E. I think you all met Dominic. Yeah. Um, yes. With three Dominics, we can christen some. There you go. Bring <laughs> <laughs> Uh, medium, regular, next meeting. <laughs> Got you. I don't want to hear about football either. <laughs> Just bring the coffee. Okay. And then uh, finally, land use staff report. Oh, here we go. Okay. You all have a copy of the town planner's report under zoning matters, ZBA agenda. The next meeting is September 7th. As of right now, there is uh, no uh, application scheduled. Siting Council, no applications were made to the Connecticut Siting Council during this reporting period. 
regulations subcommittee report. Last meeting was held on August 23rd as reported by the chairman to discuss interior lots and stockpiling of earth material. Uh, the recommendations of the ZRS was made tonight to the full commission. Zoning enforcement uh, program, 125 Garter Road. Uh, staff continues to monitor it. There was some activity recently and I will be giving a more detailed report I just learned today. Actually, I'll be sending out an um, uh, email to the commissioners. 485 Pepper Street, once again, as reported at the last meeting, uh, Grasso is using their site for the staging. Um, Grasso now uh, is going to be doing the lowering of the road. So we now we have some major uh, grading that will take place to get it ready for the winter months. Uh, staff met with uh, with, uh, with Scott today and went over uh, all of the uh, scheduling. The goal now is to get the road to the proper grade for the winter months and then take up some additional drainage uh, in the springtime. Things have been delayed because of the utility companies. In our state, utility companies are beholden to themselves and uh, created some uh, internal delays. But the, tr the project is moving forward because everybody usually drives on uh, Pepper Street. But uh, we, are, we are moving forward. We want to get the road ready for the winter months. But Rick, are they done anything over there at Pepper Street as part of their permit? No, zero, right? What's that? At the Crassel property, have they done anything there? No, they, you mean for their permit? They just finished, they did the work that was done over a year ago for the footings and foundation. Uh, Kevin, you have a as built, right? So they're they're focusing on the Pepper Street, and then do with their approval, though. No, I know they they have uh, they have the five years to complete the project. So, Kevin, I, I mean, I haven't heard anything new because it it comes in the building comes in you know complete and they disassemble it. I do know that there was actually had some reports going on today. They're getting ready to, now that they're on oh, Pepper Street. They're getting ready to construct their driveway to that. He just got back. Great. So there was some emails back and forth today. Actually, the town engineer to verify elevations and things like that. But I'm not aware of the rest of their overall schedule. But to your point, Lee, and you're right. I'm going to get a, a construct. I'm going to get a completion schedule from because the commission has been asking me for that, and they have indicated they still want to proceed. That's that's what you know too, right, Kevin? Anti-blight enforcement program, 337 Monroe Turnpike. That's the building that has been exposed. The mm -hmm. uh, fuel tank has been removed, and now we're going through the final process for the demolition. The building is going to be coming down this year, so that's a positive. 1586 Monroe Turnpike. That's uh, across the street from uh, Stevenson Lumber. They've repaired the roof. They did some painting and we have to do some miscellaneous uh, screening. It's an old building. It's mm -hmm. going to be it's, it's going to be knocked down. Yeah. They're, they're waiting for uh, Stevenson, uh, you know, to kick into high gear, which it is. The commission's approved two uh, locations. We're ready for a third. And I think you're going to see more uh, activity across the street. That that basement used to flood like crazy. I can't even imagine what it looks I like right now. Yeah. 52 Moose Up Trail. Uh, the CEO received a complaint regarding vehicles mm. and equipment on a vacant lot. That's being worked on by the CEO, 51 Karen Drive. Uh, the zoning officer has received a complaint regarding debris placed along the side of the road. Uh, Joel did send a letter to the property owner. And the last one, uh, 56 uh, Page on Trail. Uh, the zoning officer has received a complaint regarding the lack of maintenance on the exterior condition of the uh, the dwelling. Patching or patching? Uh, I may have uh, misspelled that. I, I couldn't read Joe's uh, uh, writing the other day. Does anybody know the, know the name of the trail? I think it's Pat Chog. Pat Chog. Yeah, A-U-G. A-U-G. Another Indian name. Yeah, that and the other one are right down the street from each other. Native American. 
Native outdoor American. outdoor dining. Uh, Native American on that one, please. Outdoor dining has essentially uh, been completed. Uh, has anyone gone to the Vazis? Because that really they came out nice. And uh, mm -hmm. what happened with the parking spot? I actually, the Vazis. Yeah, they 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 kept it for now, Leanne. They want to. They think it, it can work. I have a question. Was that supposed to be a temporary or a permanent? Oh, this is permanent. permanent. Oh, it's permanent. That's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> we received permission from the property owner. Our job is to make sure the overall circulation. Liam brought up a good point. There is that parking space. Right. If it's if it's used, can impede the overall circulation. There's no way to get to the back of that building. If you have a fire truck or anything, it has to get in there. Right. There's no way you're going to get there with those cars parked. Out. And, and I thought we went over that with them. We we actually did. And I the problem I had was with doing doing it through the staff, and then not taking into consideration. I mean, you, we we need to take that into consideration. If oh, absolutely. Over there, that, that could be a problem. Yeah, I, I am going. I have. Uh, you handled that already. Already. I, I have discussion with the property owner. And uh, I'm going to discuss the problem. Tomorrow. They don't want to give up that spot. Well, because the occupants of that other freestanding building, um, they, they like they, that ability to, to have it. That's wrong. The site is tight, as we all know, you know, and, and to give up a spot. But Leon raises a good question. Well, the, the overall prime circulation prime. takes yeah. precedence. Yeah. I went through there yesterday, and I was able to get yeah. through. But you're not going through with any big, you know. That's what it is. The big stuff goes in the morning. Leon raises a good point. Yeah, and, straight delivery truck, you know, a, a medium-sized delivery yeah. truck is, is about the biggest thing you're getting back. But I'm going to revisit that, and I'll, I'll have a report at the next meeting. Well, it's kind of late now. It's late. But no, no, we still we still have uh, the ability to black it out. <laughs> so I'll, I'll raise that uh, issue again. That's it. All right, uh, moving on to 10 Victoria Drive. That's the Amazon. The applicant continues to move forward with the development of the project under the original approval with the two buildings, the guardhouse with the restrooms and the storage building, which is 10,000 square feet. I received, go ahead, Leanne. It's not, it wasn't a storage building. At first. Mm. We're going to have offices in it. No. Right, and no. they no longer need that. It was going to have bathrooms in it. No, no that's not what they bought. So they're going to do repairs in there. He's right. No. Oh, it was offices, locker rooms. It started off as having an office. I remember the locker room. And stuff. That's oh, what that all started off as. The break room, yeah. It was conceptual. I, I, I don't, I want to see those plans. Oh, yeah. And uh, I really do. I, I received the first set of plans today late at 430, and they're not colored. I, I am not going to show the commission a black and white. It just doesn't do it. They are showing a masonry skirt around the bases of both buildings so it complements each other and you want a, an attractive building from the view of uh, Victoria uh, Swiss Army Knife. And I, I want to add they were able to preserve a lot of the trees on that side by Swiss Army Knife so that was uh, pretty good. The developer has made minor changes to the site plan including enlarging the detention basin uh, and uh, pro, uh, Scott is aware of that reducing the underground storage water system, reduction of the retaining wall, height, shifting of the office building as as uh, brought up by the commission tonight, resulting in the elimination of 15 parking spaces. All of these changes are minor in nature and do not require action by the commission. What this commission wants to see are the detailed elevations, and I will have those for the September 16th uh, meeting. So they are moving forward. They're looking for uh, an occupancy uh, in, in, in the fall of some time, sometime in the fall. So I will be giving a report at every meeting because uh, they are moving forward. And obviously, the commission wants to look at the elevations. The, the next item. 64 Cambridge Drive and 10 and 36 Main Street. The property owner advised the Planning and Zoning Commission at its July 1st that fill was to be deposited at the two sites as an exempt activity under section 6.4.15.
The commission advised the owners that they would be doing this activity at their own risk pending a legal opinion from land use council. The commission received it. The consensus is that a permit is required. Staff has confirmed that earth material has been, been placed at both locations. If the co commission determines that a permit is required, then a cease and desist order will be issued by the zoning officer with a directive that a filling and grading permit is required. You have made this decision that a permit is required. 10 and 36 Main Street in the application is coming before the commission at the September 16th. The 64 Cambridge Drive, that's another matter. And we do have a cease and desist on that property already. So another order does have to go out and this commission will be advised by uh, Mr. Chapman at the, not, at the next meeting. Now, you have also received copies of photographs taken by Mr. Metropolis. You heard from him tonight. He also made a complaint. And that is part of the attachment to my uh, report. So the applicant has made an application for the 10 and, 30, uh, 10 and 36 Main Street. That's the public hearing is uh, September 16th. We have to deal with the enforcement issue at uh, 64 Cambridge Drive. All right. So it'll be a separate season to system. Yes. And under planning matters, as the commission is aware and as reported in the POCD, an affordable housing plan has to be prepared and adopted by this commission and the town council by 2022. I think the date is July 1st. Staff has started the process. Towns throughout the state have done that. Uh, we are going to be identifying parcels uh, by the commission. So it's going to be at that level. The background information is in the POCD. You will identify the parcels and this will be given to the State of Connecticut Office of Policy and Management. Our next Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, as reported tonight, is September 16th. We have several public hearings on it. And residential construction activity for this period, there are no new. As of today, eight single family dwellings have been issued uh, for this calendar year. Seems to be slowing down on this. Yeah, as you know, the, the the uh, materials. Uh, lumber, an came, lumber came down dramatically. But it came back. But a lot of people like to start in April, May. You know, it takes right. four or five months. And um, right now I think they're going to wait till uh, spring. Yeah. Right. Is that it? Okay, we'll attend a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And okay. need a second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 a